Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Didn't see you there. Actually, I did see you there. I'm not funny at all. What a bad acting. Never mind. We are going to tackle this infinity boy today on Papa Flemmy's integral week. Um, I know you guys just come for the cute twink, me with the nice looking hair, the smug face, the sexy clothes. But I hope you will stay for the cute twink doing calculus today. Hmm. What could we do? Maybe we could... Hmm. That doesn't look any good because we've got this subtraction here in this infinite product because that's the pi notation that means we are going to take the product of many 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 terms. So maybe it would be great to express this 1 minus tangent squared of x over 2 to the i a little bit different. Okay. So how can we do that? Let's uh, just say this is an A right here, it doesn't quite matter. Let's call this little expression A, this argument. And I want you guys to remember one little formula that everyone should know, that one is equal to um, secant squared of x minus tangent squared of x. I hope you know this formula and I hope you know that this is true in general. Okay, so Let's express 1 minus tangent squared a little bit different. So 1 minus tangent squared of A in this case. What is that? Well, if we would bring secant squared to the other side, so that makes 1 minus secant squared equals to minus tangent squared. And then we would just add a 1 on both sides. We can do this. That means we get 2 minus secant squared equals to 1 minus tangent squared. And that's exactly what we want. So we can make use of that. So that means this is also equal to 2 minus secant squared of A. Hmm. And remember, secant is nothing else than 1 over cosine of the argument. So that's great. Maybe we can make use of that. How could we get a cosine? itself where we could factor out secant squared of a so that would be quite useful in this case so this is 2 over secant squared of a minus 1 times secant squared of a okay and 1 over 1 over cosine squared makes just cosine squared so this expression simplifies to 2 times cosine squared of a minus 1 times secant squared of A. And that's pretty nice because what is a 1? Well, a 1 is just sine squared plus cosine squared, fundamental theorem of trigonometry. So we can make use of that. So this is 2 times cosine squared of A minus cosine squared of A and well, 2 times cosine squared of A minus cosine squared of A just makes 1 cosine squared of A. So that would cancel out nicely. Here's a positive sign now. <laughs> and negative sine squared of A because we get a negative sign here. That was the whole point. Times secant squared of A. And this is absolutely nice because this right here is exactly the double angle formula for the cosine. So this expression right here is nothing else than the cosine of 2a. And that's absolutely crazy and nice because we've rewritten this expression right here that would turn out pretty awful when taking an infinite product to make it into some product itself. So what is that? All in all, this makes the integral of 1 over x times the infinity boy from i equals to 1 to infinity of cosine. Well, and we get 2a, but what is a? a is just x over 2 times i, so this makes x over 2, uh, 2 to the i, I'm sorry, x over 2 to the i minus 1. So that's nice. So this is x over 2 to the i minus 1. So that's the first term. We've distributed this 2 into there. And also we get secant squared of x over 2 to the i dx. And here's one nice property. 
if we've get a product, in a product we can just split it up into two products. So this is also equal to the integral of 1 over x of some infinity boy from i equals to 1 to infinity of cosine x over 2 to the i minus 1 times some infinity boy from let's say k equals to 1 to infinity of secant squared x over 2i dx. And this is actually solvable right here. And we just want to take a look at this right here because if we know the solution to this one, we also know the solution to this one. Because since this is a product right here, we can also take this exponent out. So that's one thing we can do. So this is just this expression squared. And don't forget, secants is nothing else than 1 over cosine. So the solution to this one is kind of the recipro reciprocal of this one right here. Sorry for bad English. Let's take it the next part. So like I just said, we just want to focus on this product right here because the other one is completely the same, just the reciprocal. But there's one thing that's kind of bugging me because we get x over 2 to the i minus 1. So it would be nice to factor out the first member of this infinite product. Maybe we should have first um, take a limit of this thing. Maybe that makes things a little bit more clear. So this infinite product is just a limit as uh, let's say k approaches infinity of i equals to 1 to k of our argument cosine x over 2 to the i minus 1. So working with finite things is way easier than working with infinite things. Okay, next part. If we take i equals to 1 on here, well, this is 2 to the 1 minus 1, and this makes 0, so um, that's just 2 to the 0 of power, that's a 1, so cosine of x is the first member of this product. We can bring it to the outside. So this is the first one, so it's the limit, as k approaches infinity, of cosine of x times this infinity boy. Now we took out the first member, so it's i equals to 2 to k of cosine x over 2 to the i minus 1. And the great thing is, well, we can move our index a bit, so that means we can move i to be 1, and we can move our 2 to the i minus 1 to just 2 to the i. So we moved our index 1 to the left, in that case, on the number line. Now we could maybe write this expression out and see what we get. So what is this, this expression? We um, yeah, just write everything again. That's the limit as k approaches infinity times the cosine of x. And well, what is this infinite product? It starts with, OK, so this is the cosine of x over 2. Next part is cosine of x over 4 and this will move on to um, times 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 the cosine of x over 2 to the k. And now we want to transform this right here a little bit. How could we do that? Um, we've discussed double angle formulas before. This right here, and that's the double angle formula for the cosine. But there's another double angle formula, the double angle formula for the sine. And the sine of 2a is nothing else than 2 times the sine of a times the cosine of a. And that's really, really useful because we can turn this right here into a telescoping product using this formula because we can rewrite this. This is equivalent to um, cosine of a is equal to sine of 2a over 2 times the sine of a. And we can plug this in. So let's see what we get now. This is the limit as k approaches infinity of the cosine of x 
and this is now. So don't forget our a is our x over 2 in this case now. So at first we end up with, um, well, this is just the sine of x over, hmm, and this is now 2 times sine of, um, this is now x over 2. <laughs> x over 2. Okay, next part. This one right here. 2 times x over 4 is just 2 times x uh, is just x over 2. So that's times the sine of x over 2 over 2 times the sine of x over 4. And just for clarification purposes, the next one would be sine x over 4 over 2 times sine x over 8. And we can move on up until this point. And this is now the sine of x over 2 to the k minus 1 over 2 times the sine x over 2k. So that's absolutely nice because, like I said before, it's a telescoping product. So this will cancel out. Whoops. I dropped my chalk. <laughs> this will cancel out, this will cancel out, this will cancel out. And what we end up with finally is this 2, 1 cancel out, this 2 will stay. So this is sine of x over 2, and we get this 2k times, so that's 2 to the k power, times the sine of x over 2k. So let me gather everything. So let's move on. We are nearly done with the hardest part. The good thing is, Cosine of x and sine of x aren't dependent of k. So we can bring them to the outside. They are just constants in terms of this limit right here. So this is now cosine of x times the sine of x times the limit as k approaches infinity. And we want to use L'Hopital's rule now because we kind of got a zero over infinity, infinity over infinity, infinity situation, something like this. Because this is one over, well, when k approaches infinity, this is just infinity to, to, the, to the infinity. And this is sine of x over infinity, so that's sine of zero, that's just zero. So we now have a one over infinity times zero situation. But we can turn this around a little bit. We could bring this two to the k on top, making it two to the minus k to get a situation where we can use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so this is now 2 to the minus k over sine x over 2k. So that's something we can do now. So this is now just um, a zero times infinity situation. And let's use L'Hopital's rule on this one. So that means we want to differentiate, differentiate this in terms of k the numerator and also the denominator. Um, yeah, let's put it that way. Okay, so how do we do that? Remember my boys, how can we differentiate a function like this? So 2 to the minus k, we can rewrite this as e to the ln of 2 to the minus k, and this is just e to the minus k ln of 2. And the great thing is we know how to, um, well, how to differentiate that because that's just an exponential function. So the derivative of this thing right here, let me put it here, is cosine of x, sine of x, limit as k approaches infinity of, when we differentiate that, this is just minus ln of 2, and then we can rewrite this just like before, so that's 2 to the minus k. And nearly the same thing here, this is x times 2 to the minus k. So we have to take the inner derivative and the outer derivative. So what is the outer derivative? Well, sine becomes cosine. So that's the cosine, x over 2 to the k power. And also, this is the same derivative as before. But don't forget your x right here we have x times this thing. So this is x times um, minus ln2, 2 to the minus k. And the great thing is, that's a common factor, and that's a common factor, and that will cancel out. 
And if we let the limit as k approaches infinity here, that's the cosine of zero and this is just one. So our limit is just one over x, so that's great. So we end up with cosine of x times sine of x over x. And same thing holds for the secant squared, infinite product. Just it's the reciprocal and the whole thing squared. That was a long ride and now we can place everything in here that we've gathered. And like I said before, this is just this expression squared and this is just one over cosine of this expression. So that makes it quite simple. So right here we get the cosine of x times the sine of x over x and this expression right here. And don't forget, we are not getting our cosine at first because this goes not from 2 to the i minus 1, it goes from 2 to the i, 2 to the k in this case. So what we get is x squared over sine squared of x. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. <laughs> Take a piece of paper and bring it on there. Just try calculating this one right here. It's the same procedure. So this we cancel out, this we cancel out with this and that. And what we end up with is the integral 1 over x times the cosine of x over the sine of x but times x. So this and that we cancel out dx and we know what that is. That is just the cotangent. So this monster expression has been simplified down to a cotangent. And now we actually want to integrate that and that's the easiest task. So let u equal to sine of x. That also means that du is nothing else than cosine of x dx. And this is exactly what we have here. So our integral is now du over u. So this makes ln of u. And well, this is nothing else than the natural log of sine of x plus some arbitrary constant c. So that's that. That was quite easy. It was just a lot of writing. I hope every step became clear. If it didn't, just leave a comment. I'm terribly sorry if I'm bad at explaining or something. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Recommend me if you like. Um, if you want to support me a bit more, Take a look in the description, there will be a link to my corresponding Patreon. And until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.